on uh, the evening of January 11th, 2021 is what the agenda should say at 7 p.m. So we're holding this uh, meeting remotely in accordance with the state uh, governor's orders of March 12, 2020. And it is being, um, it's being done through Zoom and it's open to the public. It has a meeting ID and passcode so the public can participate. The agenda for tonight is uh, we'll take attendance, review mail, review minutes, continue a public hearing on uh, the uh, site plan review and stormwater permit of South Deerfield DG Series LLC. We'll have a public hearing for a special permit application I got it on my phone. I was going to bring it upstairs and watch them bad. Of 81 Stillwater Road. If everybody could, uh, could silence themselves if they're not speaking, that'd be great. I'm going to do a public hearing on an application on 81 Stillwater Road to improve a driveway exceeding 500 feet. We'll continue a hearing, the public, uh, I mean, a site plan review for from Dale Whitney regarding the use of 250 Greenfield Road. Then we do have some old business. Um, We have uh, the formula-based business bylaws. We also want to talk about accessory apartments and the solar bylaw, which we did at the last meeting. Then we'll take up any new business. We'll set a date for the meeting and we'll adjourn. Uh, so let's take attendance first. And if everybody, if I just go around and I, I say your first name, if you're a planning board member, if you can say your last name and let us know that you're here. Uh, Denise. Miss Mason here. Anna Lee. Anna Lee Wolfcool here. Max. Auntie's here. Rachel. Rachel. Rachel just, Blaine here. Right, uh, and, and Mary. And Mary Cloutier are here. And John Waite here. And Paul Ellis um, is not here. So we've got six out of our seven planning board members. Thank you very much for, for being in attendance. Is everybody okay with the agenda? We did get some mail. Um, does anybody have comments about uh, the mail that we received earlier today? I think they were mostly about issues we're going to talk about tonight or um, notices from our neighboring towns that we don't necessarily need to talk about. And minutes, and Mary, any word on that? I don't know what you mean. John? Jennifer, thank you. So um, Sue sent out the minutes, like for like all of them. So what we had said at the last meeting is that everybody would review those minutes and then we would vote tonight to say to approve all of those minutes. And so they were everything that hadn't been voted on in the past. So if, is that what you, you know, Anne Mary, is that how everybody remembers it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I have, I think I have it the way I sh it should be done. That I'm taking them and then I'm passing them off to Sue and Jennifer, and then at, you know at that point I it's sort of out of my hands. So, yeah, I guess that's that's why what I wasn't trying to be flip. I. So thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> So I guess if anybody has comments, right, John, they would say they're, if they wanted anything to be changed from the minutes that were sent out, they can say it now and then we can change it and then vote on them the next meeting. Otherwise, if you're saying that they're all great, then we can approve them and put them up as approved. And I'm, I, I read all of them. I think they're fine. I think, you know, there are just some misspellings of names, but I don't think it's any big deal. Um, I would... You know, I don't have a problem with them. Um, for those of us who were not installed as planning board meeting members for some of those minutes, 
um, are we voting on the minutes as a block or are we voting on specific dates? I, I would probably, you know, abstain for the meetings that I wasn't at, I wasn't a planning board member on. Uh, I'm looking for direction from other planning board members. I'm, I have no. You know, want to just go through them one at a time. What date were they sent out? Because I've got to look back through. Yeah, December 29th, I got them. 29th, that's right. Yeah. From um, from Sue, and there's um, eight of them, I believe. There were only two, Annalie, that we were not present at. One of them was not, it wasn't a big meeting. So I, I didn't have any problem with that one. And there are, there are ones that have been voted on. Um, uh, Jennifer, I don't know if you have, I don't have it in front of me, um, but I know, I'm sorry, go ahead. You mean of that group, there were some that were voted on? Oh, no, I just asked Sue to send out a list of all of the ones that had not been voted on. Okay, so, all right. Um, yeah, I only saw two on the website that were voted on. So, I mean, so why don't we take the two that um, aside that Denise and Annalie weren't there for and take the rest as a block? Can we do that? I, mo I make a motion that we approve the mm -hmm. minutes um, that uh, Annalie and um, Denise are not included in when, from when they are not members on um, and vote to approve it. Um, let's, let's get some dates on those. I'm just looking. Yeah, at yeah I, I guess I, I know it's going to take a couple minutes, but I guess I'd rather say the dates um, because okay, then. Yeah. You know the ones, Denise, that you and Annalie were not. Well, let's. We're just going to open them all up quickly, and we'll vote on them. So, I think I'm starting at the oldest is is February third. Uh, yeah. No. Huh? I'm just looking for them. Yeah. Um, the February. February, I um. The ones I know of are from this summer on. We've actually voted to approve the ones from July. There wasn't one in August. We approved the ones from the beginning of September. All right, can you can you name? Uh, I'm, the ones I'm we opening should, it. We well, we should say the name of the, the, the meeting date, yeah. Well, I didn't realize that I was gonna, we were gonna go back and decide which ones we had voted on and which ones we, we hadn't. Um, you wanna go backwards? Uh, yeah, let's, that's a, yeah, let's go backwards. Let's start recent and. So November 2nd is the, uh, the latest one in the group. But, but you're right, that's the one I thought we approved last month. All right. Yikes. So I yeah. have um, February 10th, February 24th, February 3rd. <gasps> Jennifer, can you quiet people down? Or? Yeah, I just have to find who's being. I know, that's what I was, I was thinking. <laughs> um, I see February 23rd and February 24th. We were not here for those. February, uh, April 6th. Yeah. So I'm hearing conflicting things. I'm hearing that some people say they haven't been voted on, but others may be saying they are. That's what's confusing. So 
The email from Sue says, resending unapproved minutes from 2020 to all members. I've attached all the minutes that need to be approved. So I have 7 6 2020. Yeah. Can... I move that we approve 7 6 2020. I second it. Um, I don't see the attendance on that one, but it looks like we were all there because it was a vote of seven to nothing. So if that could just be added. Uh, and some, some spellings corrected, then I would. Uh, I vote in spelling. Report that. On 7 6 2020. Rachel's name, my name is a couple words spelled wrong. So I think. Um, all right, I'll just make a list of what you say for each one that you say and then. All right, so, so July 6th is a, a motion and a second, right? Yeah. Um, so if we add the who was in attendance um, and we correct the spelling, all those in favor? Um, uh, Denise. Denise Mason, yes. Uh, Annalee. Annalee Wolfcool, yes. Max. Yes, uh, Mac Anthes, yes. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, yes. Anne Mary. Anne Mary Cloutier, yes. John Waite, yes. So that's July 6th past uh, 600 with corrections. Yep. And now I have 914 2020. I make a motion to accept the meeting of 914 2020. Second. Who second? Annalee. Any discussion? All those in favor? Denise. Yes, Denise Mason. Similarly, though, before, just quick, similarly, yep. my name is spelled differently. Okay. It's, for, it's just E L and no E. A, no A, no E. No E at the end of Blaine, no A in Rachel. <laughs> so with, so with, with the spelling corrections. Denise. Denise Mason, yes. Annalee. Emily Wolfcool, yes. Max. Max Santis, yes. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, yes. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. John Wheat, yes. Okay. Next is October 5th, 2020. I move we approve October 5th, 2020 with corrections of names and appendants and whatnot. I second that, Denise Mason. Don't see um, uh, Rachel, Annalie, John, Denise. Max, you might not have been at this one. It doesn't call you absent, but it doesn't call you present. Do you remember? We could, we could either we're, we're, I'm sorry, we're on October 5th, right? 10th. October 5th, yep. yeah. I don't remember Max missing any of these, so. I don't either. So we'll get clarification from Max, but he, we might need to add him to the, uh, in attendance. Okay. Otherwise, that looks good with some spell checks of um, Rachel's name again. <laughs> All those. Uh, MO so, is marijuana overlay too. I think we might want to write that out. Just it's actually in bold, it yellowed. Yeah. Just for clarity, if you know we're looking back at something like that, um, we'd want to know what MO was. It was didn't jump out at me. Yep. I could remember, and then I remembered. My name is always spelled incorrectly. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. All right, so with corrections, do we have a motion to approve the uh, minutes from October 5th? I think I already moved. Oh, sorry. There was a move, yeah. Denise seconded. Seconded. And Denise seconded? Yes. All right, all those in favor, Denise? Denise Mason, yes. Annalie? Annalie Wolfcore, yes. Max? Abstain, I wasn't there. Oh, you oh, weren't okay. there, sorry. We'll call, we'll call them not there. Rachel? Uh, Rachel Blaine, yes. 
And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. John Waite, yes. Five zero one for October fifth. Great. Okay, November second. I'm just going across the email thing. So. Yeah, we we're pretty confident that in our December meeting we um we approved this one. All right. Okay, so I'm going to put approved. Yeah. Okay, and then I have April sixth. Sixth. These were not notes that I took as the clerk. There was some um, miscommunication about crossover. So these were my personal notes that I took that I've submitted as a draft to this. But there was some confusion as to, because this is when COVID hit. Yeah, this, this, is, when, this is when our meetings changed that no one was sure when anybody was taking notes. So these were never intended to be minutes. These were intended to be my private notes. That's the best we could do. But these were, these that I'm looking at were submitted by Casey. I think she took your notes and made them in the minutes. Yeah. Okay. Because they seem pretty formal. So I would go with them. Mm -hmm. And anything prior to this is not me. Okay. <laughs> On record. <laughs> well, it, it should say right. submitted by. Okay, but once we vote on them, there are minutes as a group. So, correct. Yeah. And so it looks like um, these, um, Denise and, and Annalie, were not here. Um, John, Rachel, and Mary, Max, Paul. Well, so um, I'll make a motion to approve the April 6, 2020 minutes. Uh, February 6th? No, sorry, April 6th. Oh, April 6th. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Max? Mm. Let's see. Um, Max Antis, yes. Rachel? Uh, Rachel Blaine, yes. And Mary? Anne Marie Cloutier, yes. John Wait, yes. So that's uh, one, two, three, four. That's a majority, so that's that passes. So um, those minutes of April six are approved. Great, thank you. And uh, February third. And I'll I'll have to move to uh, um move to accept these min minutes. Uh, I shared this meeting. I was absent. Um, Rachel, it's got to lower yours too. So. Rachel and Max are the only ones that attended this that are currently on the board. Um, but I guess you two vote on them and we're good. <laughs> what do you say, Max? Rachel Blaine, yes. Max. They're pretty much. Max Santis, yes. Draft. So. And then. Um, Myself and Anne Mary weren't there, so we'll abstain. So, so okay. So we have four voting members and and, and two. Two zero approved, two. So we will we will consider the February third minutes approved. Okay, February tenth. Ten. Ooh. This so is this, February tenth of twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Oh. Yeah. Okay. This, we were on a different platform too. This where a lot of us were, like we were also on phone a lot, I think I was. Anyway, this is more. Uh... Yeah. So it says February 10th at the, at the top, but it says February 3rd on the minutes. So we need to change that because they are different minutes. I was at this one. Yeah. Um, and the following one is February 24th. Yeah. We were busy last February. Yes, we were. I wasn't here. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. all right. So, if we change the date up at the top, Jennifer, do you see that? You know what? This was this was in advance of the town meeting, right? Yeah. So, so the February third says February tenth, so I can change the date. Change yes. The date, and then the February twenty fourth is. 
That was a very short meeting, I think. Yeah. So, so I was at the 10th, wasn't at the third one. Yeah. Okay. okay. And All right, so February 10th, I make a motion to approve those minutes. I second. Um, all those in favor, Rachel. Uh, Rachel Blaine, yes. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. John Wheat, yes. And Max, you were absent, so you abstain? Oops. Yes, Max <laughs> Andy's abstain. All right, so the February 10th, they pass, um, they were approved. Yay, we did it. No, we're not done. The 24th, right? Oh, February I thought 24th. 24th. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Never mind. Almost. Ah, North Street. Yep. Okay. I remember that one. So I will make a motion to approve the minutes of February 24th. Um, oh, I guess my I goodness. I second it, but I was, I can't I was, vote. I'm the only one there from this group. All right. So you can second it, Rachel. Thank yep, you. I second it. Any discussion? I will have a discussion with myself and then I will vote to approve them. Um, and then Max and Mary, Rachel abstain. So February 24th, minutes pass are, are approved as well. Oof. Thank you so much, uh, Jennifer, Sue, and Mary, everybody who had a hand in that. And um, I apologize to the folks attending this meeting who have nothing to do with some of these old meetings, but um, town business must go forward. Okay. Back to the agenda. All right, I would like to open the continuation of a public hearing of a court ordered remand on the revised application of South Deerfield DG Series LLC for site plan approval pursuant to section 5400 of the zoning bylaws and a stormwater permit pursuant to chapter 155 of the town code for the development of a 9,318 plus or minus square foot dollar general retail store and associated site improvements on approximately 1.99 acre site located northeasterly of Mill Village Road and westerly of Greenfield Road in Deerfield as further identified in the town assessor's records. As map 132, lot 29 and 30 situated in the commercial zoning district C2. I just want to see who, um, so this is a continuation of a, uh, it was, uh, we, we, last month we continued it. And prior to that, we had, had two other months of, uh, of this public hearing. And I believe tonight we have with us, um, in addition to the applicants, we have our, our attorney, um, the town attorney, Adam Costa as well. Um, so we did get notification of a request to continue it again from the applicant. And I see um, the attorney for the applicant is here. Uh, Mr. Donahue, would you like to uh, make a request? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, board. Mark Donahue on behalf of the applicant. Uh, we have uh, submitted uh, a written request to continue this evening's meeting. Um, you may know from uh, press release or other manner um, that there was a ruling on a superseding determination of applicability um, that was a conservation commission uh, matter. Um, I referred to that in my request to extend the December meeting. Um, we uh, are, are moving forward uh, with the plan uh, in light of that. Uh, that requires some work to be done, which is hard to get done in the winter, most particularly uh, the uh, actual boundaries of the wetland need to be flagged and then surveyed to be able to determine what, if any, impact it has on the site plan. And so uh, we have asked uh, this board to continue this matter, and we suggest you continue it to your March meeting, since we will be uh, hopefully um, uh, having a better grasp of where we're moving forward on a different permit uh, before a different board during the month of January, uh, and therefore can focus that work at that time uh, on, on the material that, that is necessary to make that determination. So if any modifications are required, we can prepare those and review them with you. Thank you. 
the um, as given that this was a a, a remand uh, several months ago when it was supposed to be a quick uh, some, some some quick meetings, um, we're we're very concerned about continuing it much longer, and I guess our option we would like to request is that um, you just withdraw this site plan review and when you are prepared to submit something that we could review um, in short order that you'd, you'd come back to the board. And I discussed this with our attorney the other day. I don't know if he had a chance to communicate this request to you. Mr. Costa and I have had a chance to talk. Um, we're, we're not inclined mm -hmm. to withdraw. We're not sure any changes are necessary to the plan, but we do have to make sure that we, for expediency and not using up more of the board's valuable time, figure out whether that is required so that we're not uh, coming back to the board for relatively minor changes to the plan. Uh, I'm aware, obviously, of the remand. Um, I won't speak for Attorney Costa, but I'm not concerned that uh, by uh, us notifying the court that the parties are working toward uh, plan revisions in the ordinary course through the public hearing process. Uh, that we would be able to move forward. Um, I would point out, I, I did not see online, and I'm not sure it's part of the minutes you adopted on, on your, the last time we had this hearing, the planning board had indicated an intention to retain uh, another peer review consultant. Uh, we have not been provided any findings of that peer review consultant, and obviously we want to be able to understand that and determine whether any modifications are justified to the plan based upon it. So. Uh, we think we're certainly within the red zone um, and not prepared to withdraw and start all over at this time. Planning board members, or um, uh, what? What? What do we, we think about both? About well, I guess the request to continue this for two more months. Um, I certainly have some more to say, but I'd love to hear from other planning board members. Well, I think there's still a lot of issues. I mean, I think I think we need to. I really don't want to vote on a site plan until I've heard from the conservation commission. Um, I, you know, at this point, I don't. I don't. Um, I'm not. I'm not inclined to approve it. Approve the. We're talking about the continuance. Yeah, I'm not inclined to approve the continuance. And the site plan as it stands. Yeah. Annalie? I guess I'm a bit confused about the question of modifications and revisions to the plan versus when a new plan would be necessary. And that would yeah. impact whether or not it makes sense to have a continuation versus um, not. So I guess that is a good question to, to uh, let's go to our attorney first, Adam, if um, you know, this is, as we've been reminded, we're, this came back on remand and it was remand for a particular site plan that we all looked at over a year ago. And, you know, I think the one now we're looking at is, is, is uh, substantially different or needs to be substantially different. So, um, you know, when, when do we look at a new, you know, a new site plan review process versus a continuation. I don't know if you can make a opinion on that, Adam. Uh, so, so through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I, I can, but this is obviously not the the average or even a normal case, as you can appreciate. Yeah. The a site plan application that was originally submitted to your board uh, two two and a half years ago. Um, was originally denied by the board that resulted in ensuing litigation in the land court uh, resulted in settlement discussions that were had between the applicant and representatives of the town and the board. And based on those discussions and what was perceived to be at least at that time, they potentially negotiated resolution. The matter was was remanded by agreement of the parties back to the to the planning board. So I think that that backdrop is important to understand when you ask yourselves the question about amendment or modification of the site plan. It's not unusual, and I can't speak to, to uh, experience in, in Deerfield. Obviously, I've assisted you with three or four site plan approvals over the years, but it's not normal to involve council in the, every, the average everyday site plan reviews. And so you know 
better than I what your usual process is and when you would say to an applicant, you made too many changes to the plan and you've got to come back with a new application, withdraw and resubmit, pay a new fee or whatnot. Uh, and when you allow for the plan to simply be modified as part of the process that's before you. Um, certainly site plans go through modifications as part of a site plan review process. In fact, that's a, an indicator of a successful process where the board makes certain requests and the applicant is responsive to those requests and makes modifications to the plan to address concerns of the board or concerns of a board consultant. Um, so certainly it's expected that there would be changes from time to time. When those changes become so drastic that what you have is a plan that is entirely different than the plan that was before you submitted initially, it's a judgment call for the planning board when to say enough is enough, you've got to submit a new application. Typically the justification for that is a belief that there ought to be a new application fee paid. It really, or that new notice needs to go out because the original notice was insufficient to provide the public, those who would be entitled to receive it, sufficient information concerning what was coming before the board. Other than in those two circumstances, there's, there's really no difference between continuing on with the same application with a variety of changes made to the plans and starting it all over again with an entirely new submittal made of the newest plan. So it is a judgment call on your part, but going back to where I started in terms of the remand and, and what brought us here, I just do want to remind the board and I don't have a dog in the fight. So from my perspective, it doesn't matter how, how you proceed. If you choose to approve the plan um, and approve it in its current form, you could certainly take that action tonight that would move the litigation. That's, that was the anticipated um, objective and outcome of these proceedings when the remand was agreed to, case over. And if there were future changes to the plan, they'd have to come back for you. If you choose to not allow a continuance and to deny the plan tonight, well, I suspect that what that means is the applicant would then return to court, given that a denial means the matter is still before the court. Remember, you're, we're here on a remand and we'd continue to litigate the underlying case involving the current plan that's before you. Um, the continuance, and again, I don't wanna characterize the, the application or the request submitted by the applicant for the continuance, but I think the continuance is an effort to sort of find the middle ground between those two options, an approval um, and, and what would be an immediate denial and a return to litigation. So is yours how to proceed uh, procedurally with this process but those are the options available to you and those are the likely outcomes depending upon which one you choose. If, if I might, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, you, thank made, you, Adam. Yep. Thank you. Uh, you. You made a comment in, in um, casting your question, to Mr. Cost, that I think is, it maybe gets to the gravamen of the issue. You said that the plan needs to be substantially different uh, at this point. That's assuming facts that are not in evidence before your board at the present time. Um, and it's, it, it's a conclusion that the applicant doesn't share at the present time either. Um, and I think the reason for the continuance is to have an opportunity to get to the answer of that question um, and then get to the issue that attorney Costa outlined that at some point the, the magnitude of the change if required could require a refiling in some fashion and we would address it in that form. But if it doesn't get to that point, it's kind of the regular course of conduct that one would move, move forward. It's, I'm sure you have experience as a board. It's, it's not that unusual, particularly when you're in two or three different jurisdictions within the same community at different boards to basically try to keep everything a little bit up in the air while you try to figure out where you are. And I think that's what we're trying to do for the month of January is figure out where we are. Uh, and then be able to move forward, hopefully in a positive fashion. Other planning board members? What would moving it to March do particularly? What's the reason for that? Why March? March through you, Mr. Chairman, if that's directed to the applicant. Yeah. What March allows us to do is most particularly to be able to determine with more specificity than exists now, the boundaries of the wetland area and determine whether any modifications, particularly to stormwater are required as a result of that. Um, 
and therefore that that work needs to be done we have um we have a proposal from someone to go out and delineate the wetlands uh and we have to get a survey crew to fall in behind so that they can show it on a plan and the engineers can do all their work and um, we haven't had a chance to get that work done and obviously some of it has weather concerns about being, trying to delineate wetlands particularly in snow conditions so I have a question about that. I mean, typically in March, the ground could still be frozen. So I don't understand how you can do that in, in the month of March. So I guess if I can just uh, chime in here is that that's another thing that we could suggest as a planning board is if we did want to continue it, we could say, you know, I, I guess one of my concerns also, to be honest, is we have a lot of things on the planning board's agenda. There's a lot of bylaws we're looking at. We have a annual meeting that we're preparing three or four bylaw changes for. And this not knowing if we're gonna have this issue on our agenda is, is really troublesome. So we could say, you know, instead of putting it on the March agenda and maybe it being continued another month or two, I think we could say, well, let's put it on April or June um, and, and get a continuance for that. Um, because you're right, I don't, this, this month to month thing is just not appropriate. I don't, I don't feel. And, and as I said, it was supposed to be, you know, quick and easy thing and it's not. And so I think I think this isn't the same thing to me. It's not the same thing that the judge remanded it back to the board for, to tell you the truth. I think it's a whole nother animal. And, and I think we should treat it as such. Um, so I, I really feel strongly that it should be withdrawn and, um, and come back when and if appropriate. So, um, but, well, but to, to, we can't force the applicant to do that, but that's certainly our, we would encourage that. If, if part of, of your statement, Mr. Chairman, is, is a suggestion, let me put it to you this way. We're comfortable that we're gonna be able to come with specific information um, to your March meeting. We discussed that specifically today with the consulting engineers that are involved. If, if you have an agenda that you're concerned about in some fashion and you'd rather go to April, we're, we're willing to go to your April meeting. I, I, I would not, welcome anything beyond April because I think we can wrap this up in April pretty easily. Annalie? You're muted, Annalie. Still mute? Yeah. Sure. Related to the third party review, it uh, seems that the third party review would have to come with the new determination and wetlands de delineation, which then might, I mean, just thinking ahead, might take things out longer. That's, that's what I would certainly suspect is that right now we were gonna have a third party review look at one particular thing, but in a couple of months, we, it might be a bigger thing to look at so that it would it'd be, make sense to wait at, that, at this point, I would say. Yeah. That, that would be my concern that, um, we would want to, I think we, we were attending to a third party review because of the wet, you know, the, absolutely the water issue. Um, and that we would want a third party review to, to review plans that you brought, or that the applicant brought um, forward, given information, how new or how, how dramatically different, I don't know. Um, but it is a concern it, and it was a concern previously and it can persist in being a concern. Um, so the, the t timeline for that in terms of a, a third party review of modified plans, I think that that's, that's a timeline I wanna be attentive to um, and, and for the applicant as well so that the applicant has a, a sense going into it of what it is that we're going to ask. Um, so that is my concern. If I might, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I think we're using some terms that might mean a couple of different things. Your board determined at the November 2nd meeting that because of comments received from the public that over the objection of the applicant, your board was going to retain a third party consultant to review the issue of what type of soils were on the site. And I don't know whether you have engaged that consultant whether they have issued your report. I only know it's in the public domain and neither of those are in the public domain. So we're curious as to whether that even exists. Any new information we submit to you, 
is subject to your regular procedures with regard to peer review, new information, new information. And so it's, I'm sure if we submit something of that and you want to have somebody else review it, you're well within your purview to do that, as you always are. But that's not the peer review I was speaking of, which was a different subject that this board had determined it needed back on November 2nd. Thank you. So just to, to clarify, there has not been a, uh, a third party review on the information that we got on back at the November meeting. Thank you. And I think what we were just, I think what we were referring to is that at this point, I think we'd want to see what the next finding of the CONCOM is and, and other wetlands, potential wetlands issues before we would even want to engage a third party reviewer because it might be a bigger scope than, than what it would have been back in after November meeting. But, but once again, Mr. Chairman, that, that presupposes as changes to the plan. And I, I think where we are today is we're not proposing any, we're not conceding any required. We're asking you for more time so we can make that determination. I think that's a better result of all of your valuable time than approving a plan that might have to get changed or denying a plan and trying to explain to a court why you denied the plan. You know, I, I just speaking for myself, I, I hear you and um, I'm happy to explain anything in any, any court. But there is a reason, I, I think there's a very valid reason for us to be skeptical here in the town of Deerfield and for the planning board in particular. The information that we've gotten over the years from this applicant has not been forthcoming. We're not sure it's been accurate. There's enough questions in there that it, this is not the normal course of, a, of and, and in my many years on the planning board, I've never had this kind of situation. So, so this is not a normal situation and you can, so that's, that's my own um, opinion. And that's what we're trying to make some decision here. And I'd like to ask Jennifer to, to chime in. Yeah, um, Michael Leo has, uh, attorney Michael Leo has his hand up and then there's another hand up. Just so. so we're still, the planning board is still in the process of de 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 trying to decide if we want to continue this public hearing or do we want to continue it to another later meeting, okay. another monthly meeting, or if we actually want to have public participation tonight, um, or do we want to uh, close the public hearing? I mean, at this point, I, I think I'm not prepared to suggest that, but we could hear a little bit from the public tonight and then we could decide. Um, I think that's, that's up to us. The request from the applicant has been to continue it, but we haven't decided that yet. No. John, I guess at this point, I would encourage some public comment. So I just yeah. want to check with our attorney there, uh, attorney Costa, is that uh, what, what is appropriate when the applicant has requested a continuance? Can we have some public comment tonight and then decide later in this meeting whether we want to continue it to another month or not? So um, through you, Mr. Chairman. So typically when applicant requests a continuance, that's the, the issue that the board will consider first. The, the board, any board, your board or any other, is never under any obligation to grant a continuance. Continuances are granted as a matter of course, regularly by your board as well, um, but that doesn't obligate you to do so. It's a decision left to the discretion of the board. Um, if an applicant isn't present, uh, the board it can be in a difficult position where you would be proceeding without the applicant being present uh, at a session of the public hearing when the applicant has specifically requested a continuance. Even that can be justified on the basis that the applicant was aware of it, um, but that can present a challenge. Um, if you allow public comment, you're essentially proceeding with a session of the public hearing. There, there's no public comment on the question of a continuance. That's an administrative matter handled by the board, right. either you're granted or you're not. If you're proceeding with public comment tonight, then that essentially, in essence, whether you explicitly say so or not, is a decision by the board that you're not granting the continuance of tonight's hearing. You're proceeding with the hearing. Doesn't mean you're going to close it tonight. Doesn't mean you're going to vote tonight. But it would be essentially a, an effective denial of the request by the applicant to continue. Yeah. And and I do acknowledge, and I, I think again, we're in a different circumstance and most site plan review processes that there is a lot of 
people in town, public who have done some research and have something to say about this subject. And they will definitely um, get their opportunity to say it either tonight or, or at a later date. But I just want to ask our planning board members um, again, what uh, administratively, what should we do here? I think that's her hand raised. And, and Mary, and then would, Anna. Um, could we consider um, uh, putting it in a time frame that we're more comfortable with? Like a, I, I heard someone say June earlier, like May or June, would that give us enough time to sort of um, collect the information that we need and um, the applicant needs to gather from wherever they're gathering it from? Would that make us more comfortable? Would that make any other board members more comfortable to put it on May or June? Annalie? It actually feels a little bit cleaner to me uh, to not have the continuance primarily because as attorney Donahue did give his opinion that there may not need to be any or much of a change to the site plan, um, certainly as I've reviewed what the DEP has said and understand the situation, it seems as if there, my opinion would be that there in fact could be significant changes to the site plan and it would be uh, wiser to start over at a point when everything is well understood. So you're. I, I, I tend a, with uh, Annalie. So I feel wait, like there's but, a complexity to this that we felt uh, the first go round, having been part of that, uh, and um, around the water movement in that area, that there was a change um, that happened to that, the, the ecosystem there with the loss of those trees, um, that there was some sense that it was. Um, unclear at the time, given the size of the, the project for that property. Um, and those were all concerns that we had on the first go around when the remand came. Um, many of the, the applicants, you know, the, uh, the meeting of the minds uh, brought us to a new place, but it's also brought us to a different set of constraints. And I, I just don't feel comfortable um, moving fat forward very quickly until I, you know, have reviewed um, the DEP, understand that those constraints or the, the new boundaries as, um, as Annalise pointed out, the, the changes that may need to happen, may not, I suppose, um, but they were concerns that we'd had before. So I, I feel similarly to Annalie that I think um, without prejudice that, that if we ended the, the meeting, um, and that we would move to another level, another place with this project. Um, I, I have no doubt that the, the applicant would pursue it, particularly with so much um, time already invested, but I'd love to see, you know, as she said, a cleaner, a cleaner slate. We're about to really change our, the makeup of the board as well. So, I'm a little unclear on Annalie and Rachel, what what we're proposing is to, to continue it until close May or June meeting. or? Close the meeting. Close it and deliberate and vote. That's the process, yes. I, I don't see continuing this review of this site plan or continuing it without is I don't believe that's what we should do. Till June, June May, wait, April. I certainly don't feel comfortable doing it before, um, before May, just uh, also given the site, given an understanding of what, what we can find out about this site. Um, again, we had concerns before it's not, it was remanded because we we our concerns we voted on our concerns once before. I, t I this is Denise. I I tend to agree with both Annalie and Rachel. I think that 
although um, the applicant may not feel as though there will be significant changes, I tend to disagree from what I've seen so far, from what I've read. And um, yeah, I don't feel comfortable with the continuation at this point. Okay, I'm, um, I want to get clear on what we're all agreeing to. To, to, not, to not grant the continuance, which would mean we, we keep this meeting going tonight and then we decide when we want to close the public hearing. Or I, I guess that's, what's the or? Or continue it. Yeah. To continue or not continue. I mean, I I just think um, this is uh, it's unfolding. As as the applicant's attorney points out, we it's an unknown. It's not not necessarily dramatic. Potentially, it is has more significance. We just don't know. Um, a continuance until May or June or whatever. March seems very early especially given what we have on our plate. Um, we're already meeting a couple of times a month. Um, it is, uh, so I'm not, I'm not super happy about um, jumping through a lot of hoops to get everything together in March. I don't know how the applicant feels, you know, comfortable with that, but that's fine. If they do, I just don't. So if we continue, we should continue until later. I agree. There's I me mean, perhaps with Anne Mary that that a, a later date is more propitious for us. However, there is also the alternate plan, which is to close the hearing, to vote, and to make it a, a kind of a clean break and figure out where this plan is going forward. We've done it once before. Um, we could do it again. It feels a little uncomfortable just because in COVID, everything moves a little differently. And I get that, but I, I'm not. I'm not comfortable with the parameters as they stand now. Wasn't comfortable with them before. Continue not to be comfortable um, with the parameters of the water movement at that spot for that size of a project. Mm -hmm. Max, do you want to weigh in on this about continuing the hearing till later or to? to close the public hearing. Yeah, I agree March is probably too soon and, and we can't leave this thing hanging in the air continually. Um, so if they come back with another plan, we're gonna wanna have another hearing for, for another opportunity for more comment. But you know, it's just, if we hope if we continue it to later, we're going to be able to have public comment at a later date. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so what am I, I? I'm still not clear. So, do we want to continue this? No, I, I would say don't continue it, and when they're ready, they can resubmit and. We'll have a new public hearing. Well, okay. So that was my request to the applicant earlier in this meeting was to, that they should withdraw it and right. come back with a new one. They they are make your motion. They well no see we can't we can't force them. They have to accept that. That's and so far they're not accepting that. And my the the input we're getting from our attorney is that if we we close the public hearing tonight and we vote to deny the site plan. The applicant can go to the judge. The judge is likely to, well, we don't know what the judge might say. Um, they might be able to just come, come right back, I guess. Um, if, we, if we wait and continue this until May, and by then we'd know whether they need to have a new site plan or not. I think that's kind of the question. If in fact, there is more wetlands than what they, they had in their original plan, they would have to change their plan. In which case then I think, you know, actually Adam, let me ask you this is, if they do have to change the site plan at that point, we could say that this is not a continuation. I mean, when, when can we make that decision and say we want a new site plan? 
So, um, so Mr. Chair, yes, I think you could make that decision at the time, as I've mentioned before, from, from my perspective, a new plan versus a substantially changed same type plan, or at least part of the same process, or sort of six of one, half dozen of the other. It's the process is the same before you, the standards are the same. Um, Attorney Donahue has already conceded, number one, that he would consider that at that time based upon the, the board's application of its rules and regulations and the bylaw. If the board insists that a new submittal be made based upon substantial changes in the plan, um, he's also conceded, and I would concur with him in, in saying to you that you have absolute authority and ability and right to seek further peer reviews of any aspect of the project that changes. Um, you'd be less restricted than you might be in the context of what's currently before you because we're in a remand setting and the remand was for a very specific purpose. To, to simplify things as best I can for the board, there are really only two options before you tonight. Grant the continuance or don't grant the continuance. The third option, which is what I think everybody prefers, at least that's the consensus I'm hearing, is you'd prefer that the applicant withdraw, go back to the drawing board, figure out how the plan might change, is probably going to change in the words of some of you over the course of the next several months, and come back once the plan is in a better form. Unfortunately, that's not a choice you have as a board. You have to act on what's presented to you as a board. Right. So if the applicant has said no, and the applicant has said no to that option. They will not voluntarily withdraw, ask for a voluntary withdrawal, ask for a withdrawal without prejudice. If they will not do that, then your only two options are grant them a continuance, and you can determine the appropriate term of that continuance. You can give it till March or till April, or contrary to what Attorney Donahue has said is acceptable to him, you could continue it to May or to June and see what that prompts from the applicant. Or you can say, no, we're not dealing with the continuance. We're simply going to continue this proceeding, in which case you would continue your public hearing tonight. You'd allow public comment. You'd talk about where to go from here. You'd close the hearing. You'd vote to approve. You'd vote to deny. You would continue on as if no continuance request had been made. Thank you. And I know it's, it's not... Well, I think it's relevant, and I, I asked this question earlier, but I think it's uh, the public should know the answer to this too. Is this is in front of a couple of different boards, right? A couple of different groups at in Deerfield, um, and I believe the ZBA is looking at this soon. How how would this impact either the CONCOM or the ZBA, and, and what they might do? Do you know that, Adam, or, or what so, they could do, or what they could do? I mean, right. So, so through you, Mr. Chair, I, I don't know how it will impact. My, my sense is that it, it won't and it probably shouldn't given where we are in the process. Um, the Zoning Board of Appeals has closed its public hearing uh, and they are deliberating on a special permit based upon the same plan that's currently before you. Uh, the Conservation Commission um, was in the process of deliberating a request for determination of applicability. Uh, while in the process, an appeal was filed uh, due to the timing and the, the failure to take action with DEP, and DEP determined that uh, the Wetlands Protection Act is applicable to this project, and that's what's really prompted the request before you tonight, that right. the wetland delineation is likely going to, to change somewhat in a, a partial or a full redesign of the project. So I, I don't think that the outcome of these proceedings um, really directly impact what's occurring before the Zoning Board of Appeals. And there's really nothing occurring before the Conservation Commission pending a resubmittal by the applicant. Because the question has been raised that how can a, a Zoning Board of Appeals approve a special permit if there's no site plan approval? Um, and and then there, there isn't. So that's, that's, I don't know if there's any, is that possible for them to do that? So it is. So you have a provision in your bylaws, and this is not something that exists in every bylaw, but Deerfield has it, and I've seen it in a few others, that provides an opportunity for the planning board to take action on a site plan. And it contemplates a site plan being submitted to the planning board prior to the Zoning Board of Appeals acting on a special permit application for the same project. And either the planning board approving that site plan application or the passage of 60 days. And as you know, you have a I think the 60 days is likely tied to the 60 day time frame you have in your bylaw for taking action. Uh, mm -hmm. That's something that is particular to Deerfield. Other communities have unlimited time frames for site plan review. Some have 90 days, some have 120 days. It's dictated city by city, town by town. 
you have a 60 day time frame. So the bylaw does contemplate that limited sequencing where the planning board is going to be at least given an opportunity to review the plan and in an ideal world where things progress quickly to vote on that plan and approve that plan before the zoning board of appeals finds itself in a position where it might have to issue a special permit for that same project. Uh, just many of us find it very confounding that the ZBA would not consider new information um, while it's still before them. So it's, this is why it's a little pertinent to this, I think. It seems to me like continuing it to a later date gives us the best um, chance at having the most complete information. Yeah. It seems mm -hmm. like <clears throat> if uh, we send it back to a judge, we have no control over that. He may want to see new information. He may not want to see in new information. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like in order to really stay apprised of what's going on with this site, we need to stay involved in the process. And so I think to stay involved in this process, we need to continue it. But I think what we need to do is continue it to a point in time where we can, where it feels comfortable. Into the dish issues. Yeah, exactly. After school is over. Okay. <laughs> so can I get a, I think we're starting to come around to some motion. Yes, Denise. Well, I was just gonna say that. So considering that, you know, people are up for election, up for re-election, you know, there will potentially be some new board members. So, you know, I think to do it in March is, is not good for a number of different reasons. So I would propose that we would continue that to June and no sooner. I would feel more comfortable with June. So do you want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to continue this until June. I second it. Any discussion? Is that um, open it up to the applicant? Yep. Is there a specific June date, John? Uh, just like to ask you, do you need to con continue it to a specific date? Yeah, actually. Yeah. First weekend. Uh, June 7th, the first Monday in June. Thank you, Mr. Donahue. You're muted, and although we'd like that, um, we should let you talk. Um, right really appreciate your cooperation. Um, uh, I, I think I, I respect and understand the concerns of the board uh, about your early spring. What I would ask for respectfully is to go on your May agenda. Um, June, I get concerned about um, being able to, in the ordinary course, be able to move things along uh, in July and August, just as an ordinary course of scheduling that attorney Coster and I often face with boards during the summer months. So at least if we came in May, we'd have uh, uh, at least a fighting chance to uh, hopefully reach closure before we get into the vacation schedule. I know our, our town meetings are usually in May and so that becomes the April and May meetings are very busy for us. And as I already said, this year it's gonna be quite so. So. Uh, there's public comment from Chris Harris. No, no, not, not um, we haven't opened it up to public comment. Okay, there will be. Just speak some on just speakerphone. When is it? What is? What is the election? I can't remember. In name, first or second week in. Jennifer, do you have any schedule on town meetings or anything like that? It might change, but. Um... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not certain. I wouldn't want to say it. Okay. So I don't feel comfortable if we're if we have potential new board members to then schedule this in the same month that we'd be getting new board members. I'd, I'd feel much more comfortable doing it in June when it would give new board members a chance to get up to speed a little bit, <laughs> if possible. And our schedule is jammed. Um, yeah. I think at this point with two meetings a month and we're talking um, and you know, we have a, we've had good attendance through the summer months in past. So I, I'm not as concerned about that. Um, and yeah, we, always and we may be summer. able to meet in person in June. I mean, I just feel like this, this is not a ideal setting to push something through um, mm -hmm. with, if we have some control over the, the timing. So, uh, and Anne Mary and I are school teachers and uh, June is a whole heck of a lot easier than May. May is really crummy time for somebody yeah. with a day job. 
and we feel confident putting it on, we could put it the first thing on the agenda on June 7th. Is that acceptable to the applicant? Yes. All those in favor, Denise? Denise Mason, yes. Anna Lee? Anna Lee Wolf Cool, yes. Max? Max Santis, yes. And Mary? And Mary Cloutier, yes. Rachel? Rachel Blaine, yes. John Wait, yes, six zero zero. So that means um, to the public, um, thank you for hanging in there with us, but we are not gonna um, take any public comment tonight on the uh, DG Series LLC special permit or stormwater, but we appreciate all of your input and we'll continue to um, gather that and we'll learn much more over the next, uh, the coming months, both from the CONCOM um, and others. Um, so I, I hope you'll, you'll stick with us and um, pay attention to this as it, as it moves forward. Thank you. If Jennifer, if you could, um, usually we have a sign, applicant and us sign the continuation. So I think we did that through DocuSign the last time so we can do that again. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Whew. So Adam, just to be clear, this is not a normal site plan review. <laughs> we, we've done some normal ones. This one's not normal. It's just what I said. Like, nope. be off the hook for the next one, my guess. Certainly isn't normal. It's an admirable poker face, Adam. <laughs> he's, he's the best at that. So, <laughs> So my I family has to live with Dollar General for another six months. They're going to kill me. I'm going to have to find another residence. <laughs> <laughs> so Adam, I want to just double check with you. Are you uh, are you assisting with any of the other things on the agenda item tonight, or I'm not, which is good because I have an eight o'clock uh, an eight o'clock hearing, which I'm ten minutes late for. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate your uh, your assistance very much. Yes. So, thank you, Adam. We'll, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Take care. All right. Um, I would like to open the a public hearing for a special permit application of Allison and John McKinnon of 81 Stillwater Road to improve a driveway exceeding 500 feet in length to a total of 1,260 feet. So during the during this past week, we have received lots of information about this. I believe the applicants are here or right, here with us so if you guys could just give us a little overview do you have uh, can you put the map up jennifer while they explain it i see i should i should actually i i thanked adam let me thank jennifer when i got a moment because the idea is that the town staff is not going to really participate and help us as much but jennifer is helping us a lot oh, and we appreciate you. it <laughs> okay let's see I, I'm using two screens at home, so I'm, I'm going to just move this over and see if it works. All right. If um, who's going to go, Allison or? Ah, uh, where to go? Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm looking for uh. Allison or John, yes. Could you, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, can you hear yep. us? There you go, yep, thanks. Okay, uh, yes, um, in the, uh, on the property 81 Stillwater Road, we purchased the remainder of a, an approval not required plan. Um, it's uh, has very narrow, uh, well, it has legal frontage, of course, but the, uh, to develop the front of it would, uh, would be, it would, it would have a lot of, of impacts uh, potentially for wetlands uh, and and uh, you know and other, other things. So we we up in the back. There's an ideal, beautiful upland uh, site for a house, and there was an existing logging road uh, that went up the uh, narrow part of the property to the area right where we want to have our building site. So uh, we have perked uh, the land up there. It appears to be uh, wholly adequate for us to build. Uh, and what we would need is permission to extend the existing uh, driveway 
and improve it uh, and extend it beyond the 500 foot uh, limitation by zoning. I think that that pretty much sums it up. And if I can just give a um, overview to uh, the planning board that we are, uh, we have a driveway regulation section 33400 in our bylaws. And normally we don't get many driveway requests, but if it's over 500 feet, um, it does require this uh, special permit from the planning board. And the main thing we look at is uh, safety issues. And so the fire department is the main, uh, I just wanna get this out. It's really uh, what, what we're interested in, what they have to say. Um, you Jennifer, know, I, do we... see, I can't see the map. What? What? what I'm okay. sorry. To be... I'm Where, what date was it? Um, it's uh, actually it's on. If you go to our website and go to today's date, okay. it's okay. Right there, it's like the first document. It's my computer is being funny about trying to share. No worries, no worries. I've seen it. I just don't find it in the emails to us. There is a turnaround up there for fire, specifically for that. Mm -hmm. And I see that the grading was changed to allow for drainage. And I noticed that the first, what is it, the first 10 feet have to be paved? Why 10 feet? Why only 10 feet? It seems sort of. Hand up. All right, sorry. Um, we don't. I'm, I'm trying to do too many things here at once. Um, whose hand? Uh, the building commissioner. Oh, hey, Bob. Good. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, I, I just wanted to comment. I mean, I tried to make this simpler. I, I walked the driveway with the fire department, and they have designed in a turnaround and a pull off, a turnaround at the top of the fire truck, pull off area halfway up the driveway for a pump truck for a relay. Um, it meets zoning, it, um, it's 10 feet off the property line. I ran it through the police department, the police chief's fine as long as the fire chief's fine. I also checked with the EMS, this act was fine as long as the fire department's fine. Um, let's see, so I guess that's my two cents on it. I don't have any objections to it. They've done everything that anybody's requested. So where is the, um, do we have the comments from the fire chief? It, it was in an email. I don't know if it made it. It just, cause we walked it and, and then they presented a plan. I forwarded the plan to the fire department. And they emailed me back saying they were, they approved it. I thought it was submitted, but I'm not 100% sure if that email got through or not. We got a lot of documents this past week, but I didn't see it. Um, but I will vouch for that, or I can get a letter from the uh, fire department of their approval also. All right. So we'll, maybe we could, um, you know, if, if we vote on this tonight, we could just make that as a condition that we, that we, it is filed properly. Okay. Um, we appreciate your work on this too. That's very helpful. And thanks. For yeah. There's going to be another one that's very long. So I was just trying to. I know. Uh, yeah. Make well, it easier. That's the one I can find and I can't find this one in any of our emails. So it's, um, can you look at the plan if you just go to the um yeah, the, the uh, website I know. website and then it's it's the first document at the top you can't see it <laughs> i'm i'm a one screener and <laughs> i've got all my emails <laughs> <laughs> the one screen. Oh, sorry I, the, I think the work you know yeah, I, and the, I, the, I take the word of the building inspector i think that he's he's the one that i'm listening to and he's here yeah, and the 10 foot pavement, that was the one I forgot to address, was a request from the highway superintendent that they can clean the end of the driveway. Our car could be pulled off the road in the event that they couldn't get up the entire driveway. So that, that's where that came, comes from. Mm -hmm. But that's just a request. We don't have a bylaw specifically saying that. So. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. If I could directly address that, our, our uh, architect shows on the site plan, if you look at it closely, uh, that 12 feet would be uh, paved, which is slightly in excess of, of what was requested. Um, and we certainly uh, understand the reasoning for it. And if someone feels it should be a little bit longer, once the trucks are out there, it doesn't cost them much more, much more to, to do a few more feet. So 
if there's a concern, we're certainly willing to work with you there. The concern is just the fire and the, you know, mm -hmm. the yeah. emergency services. That's the concern. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, and we, we are going to be doing We're concerned about that too, training. I'm sure. You're as concerned as we are, so. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We're, in fact, we're planning to build a steel house, which uh, oh. it, it'll be very fire resistant as well. Great. Uh, so, Bob, my question again, just because I'm not seeing it all, is so the turn. There's a requirement that after somewhere halfway up is a turnout. Is that it? it well, it's also a request that they have because they won't be able to fully reach from the fire hydrant across the street right. with the hose. Right. So they'd have a pump truck halfway up back okay. as a relay to pump the rest of the way, and all those things are on the plan. So. All right. Yeah, it's like on the corner, it says pull off area from fire truck 100 feet to zero feet. There's a circumference of it. All right. Um, and also, I get, I mean, I guess it also could be used to uh, for vehicles passing. If they say you had a yeah. ambulance going up, they could pass each other in the driveway. And I'm not sure that this isn't any jurisdiction of um, the, the planning board, but um, in my experience before, there was things that the fire department may require with your house, depending on where the code is. So, um, you know. Yeah, they might add things that we don't, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, we just really look at the grade and the distance and the, uh, if, right. the if the fire um, chief is good with it, we're good with it, so. Right, so All right, do we have a motion? Hammerhead turnaround that's close to the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we have a motion from anybody on the planning board? Can I make a public comment? Um, oh, sorry. Um, this is a... Um, is this Julia? This is Julia Coffey. I'm a property abutter. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. This is a public hearing. Yes, yes please go ahead. Oh, so um, I welcome my neighbors and I've looked at the site plan and I've looked at the work that they've done on the site and um, it all looks excellent. Um, my concern with um, the plan is uh, larger uh, development prospects as far as uh, granting this ex exemption um, being possible shared driveway for um, developing further up the ridge behind uh, the property on Stillwater Road. So um, it, I, I understand you, the, that it could be opening a door. I would love to see their project go forward. So there's no objection there, but I'm just uh, interested in the town precedent as far as um, opening other doors. Can you identify yourself and give your address too? Sorry. Yeah, she I am uh, Julia Coffey at 75 oh. Stillwater Road. Yeah. Thank you. If, if I may address that answer directly. Uh, well, I, I'll also address it as a, as a town board, but yes, you can do it on this specific one. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, I, uh, the planning board members would already know that uh, we would, would no longer be able to uh, subdivide that lot because there'd be insufficient frontage to uh, to do so. Uh, this, this lot is... Uh, uh, pretty much restricted by zoning to never uh, be subdivided. Um, so I don't, we're not, we would not be voting on that, Julia, necessarily, but what I do know is that if they were going to do more than one, you know, unit, it would be a, considered a subdivision and there's a whole another more, much more complex Absolutely. public hearings for that. So this is just an approval of a driveway. Um, and so I, I, you know, we can't say that they wouldn't come back somebody, sometime, but if they did, it would just be like starting, like if there wasn't a driveway and they would come back as a, as a, as a uh, subdivision. Um, so I, I don't think- And, and, and this would be a, a exemption specifically for their project and wouldn't set a precedent for other projects in town as well. I, I, I would say, no, I can't imagine. Max, Wonderful. are you- uh, Thank you. Max, I know you know the area. Are you are you too close that you have to abstain, or are you far enough away that you can give us any input? I'm really close. 
<laughs> so, do you want to say something? Or? Oh, we abut like, I don't know, 600 feet of property line. So, so do, do, I haven't heard any. Do you have any issues? Or? I'll keep them to myself. <laughs> Jennifer. Um, so something that had um, come up in my past is is like just talking about the, the clearing um, for the driveway and how that may impact it, because I don't see anything on this uh, on the plan about that. Yeah, if I could comment on that, um, if yeah. you don't mind, building commissioner, um, it's pretty much all cleared already. It's an existing road what they'd be doing to improve it would be more grade work. And I, I can't imagine a lot of trees, but that's up to you as the board. I just wanted to comment on it. Thanks, Bob. Didn't know that. Yeah, so again, all we're looking at the you know, driveway regulations are in our bylaws. The building inspector and you know oversees that. The only thing we're asked is the uh, the special permit uh, because of the length. Um, well, or, yeah, or if it, um, I guess if it came closer to neighbors or something like that. But, yeah. Any other, um, anybody else from the public have a comment? I don't see anybody's hands up. No hands? Nope. All right. Do we have a motion from the planning board? I move that we endorse the ANR for 81, right? Stillwater Road. Um, yep, 81. It's a special permit, not an yeah. ANR. Oh, sorry, sorry. I moved, sorry, not an ANR. Yeah. I move that we approve the a a special permit. Thank you. Sorry, I knew that. I second that. Denise Denise second. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor, Denise. Denise Mason, yes. Annalee. Annalee Wolfcool, yes. Max. Max Anthes, abstain. Abstain. Uh, Anne Mary. Anne Mary Cloutier, yes. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, yes. John Waite, yes. That's five zero one. Um, I, oh, sorry, just, we, we did mention it, so it should have actually gone in the motion, just that we need a, um, the written comments from the fire chief um, saying that they're fine with it. That we include that in the... But that, that actually should go in the, in the motion, yes. Noted. Thank you. Good luck, folks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob, for helping us with that. Are we going to do the other one tonight or not? I, I think that's not on tonight, is it? The other driveway? No, that'll be at a later date. All right. But, it, you know, we know the process now. This is, I think, the, very, very similar. Yeah. I think it's the first one I remember in a long time, and now there's two of them. <laughs> thanks, for, yeah. thanks for doing all the upfront work, Bob, with the, with the fire department. All right. All right. Look forward to meeting you, Bob. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yep. Once we get out of COVID. I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Let me get my agenda back up here. Jesus, too many documents. All right. Continue. Continuation of a public hearing. Site plan review from Dale Whitney regarding the use of uh, 250. Greenfield Road as an antique store. So this we discussed last month. Um, and there were some questions and Jennifer, I think you've worked with the folks to get some more documentation and we have a lot, but I'm not quite sure. I saw a lot of things going around today. So I guess, and I'm not sure I kept up with it. So um, maybe- There is Dale, some could... things we're still waiting for, John. All right, so um, do you wanna give us a, a quick overview, Dale? And then I'm gonna to go to Jennifer and then we can 
open it up. Sure. I spoke to the fire chief and he gave me the the person to contact in which you should have on file uh, the response that I had from the fire inspection and they uh, sent us the review and they sent us um, the invoice of what it would cost us to have it updated in which we are going to go through with. Um, we also have the information that I sent to you guys regarding the um, the shrubs in the front and what we plan on doing with that and how we're going to take care of that throughout um, the se different seasons. And they're also going to do plowing and so on and so forth, maintenance. Um, and we also have, we were unable to make contact with an engineer or contractor that had the time to come and give us the information I think that we needed on the parking. Um, but we did get some verbal information indicating that because it's a gravel driveway, the only thing that the engineer would wanna do is give us pricing for revamping it to a fully paved driveway in which that is not on our, in our budget or agenda to take care of right now. But they did say, according to the Massachusetts guidelines that there was plenty of space to put four handicapped um, parking areas right in the front of the building, right where it's level. And they would have um, uh, eight feet wide with a five foot aisle in between each one where uh, if there was four people there at the same time, each one would share the five foot aisle in between. Um, and we did send a rough map of that with the information um, that I sent this morning. Um, so it's it's the person who we haven't, and, and I'm a conf little confused because I put on my um, notes from the last meeting for the police to come in and I wasn't 100% sure that what that was for. And I did not have any note on electrical. Um, we've had the fire people go in and we did have, um, I think that, I'm sorry, um, Mr. Building Inspector, are you the one that went through with me? Um, yes, oh, I am. You are. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think we're kind of splitting things here. I mean, the, the change of use requires a special permit from the zoning board and then this is for site plan review also because of change of use, but we also talked because I'm the building commissioner about building issues also. So there's building issues like, yeah, like what I requested with a person to go in for to do a code review is more of a building code issue than would pertain yeah. to this that's, board. That, that's for, and that's not something you do. No, that, I want to make sure that the building itself is, is up to code, but that wouldn't affect this board, the it, building. It, it would, actually. It does, because the code review would say the size and the use of the building, and that gives you how many parking well, spaces. Well, right, parking-wise, yeah. And, and how big your handicapped spaces are, and that the code review does do that part for the exterior of the site plan review. Yes, for parking spaces, yeah. I just wanted to, and, I didn't want to get into the electrical and all the, that, that's a, that's yeah. kind of a separate issue. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But would that be a part of the application process? For Again, the no? building permit? Yes. Correct. Like if you're going to, a building permit, I, I kind of have been like three different venues with this one, with the, with the building permit. This is strictly site plan review, which just would address things like the sign, lighting, on-site disposal system, you know, there's a... Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I still, and, and that would be an engineer that would have to do the code review. That's what I'd like, or an, or an architect, just so that I have a review of the systems of the building. Like, I'm very happy with the fire service arrangement, with the, with the upgrade of the fire panel and all that, but there's yeah. other issues, because because it's... You also have residential upstairs and how that all ties together. Yes, but those yes. are building code issues, not necessarily okay. for this venue, other than the parking. Okay. Generally. Okay. 
Okay, so we're still gonna try to get the engineer. <laughs> this is, I don't know if it's because of the timing for the end of 2020, it was just been a real effort for us to be able to get someone to come this far and, and be able to do this before we wanna yeah. to get everything so, taken care of. All right, so I know it's it's, Seems complicated, Dale, but there is the three different, it's all the different permits and everything. I, I know. Let me go, let me go to Jennifer, who's going to help us walk through there. And what is it that we actually need, Jennifer? And do we, do we really want to continue this till we get these engineering plans? Yeah, I think we need to continue until it's not necessarily going to be engineering plans because on the application, it does say the original prepared by a registered professional engineer, registered architect, registered landscape architect, or a registered land surveyor needs to submit the plans and they need to be stamped. And yeah. so it's a set of plans that are going to show everything that the, the site plan needs to see. So it will be parking spaces. It will... It will have part of that code review because you have a mixed use building. It's going to show where the sign is and that you're going to keep the existing sign. And it's also going to show us what the sign is actually going to look like with your logo on it, even though, because you're going to keep it in the same spot. It's just going to be, it's pre-existing non-conforming sign. Yeah. You're going to keep it exactly the same. And then we want to know exactly what it's going to look like because you could say, oh yeah, I'm keeping it the same. And then all of a sudden it's something flashy, crazy, mm -hmm. blinky, and everybody's like, nah. Yeah, um, no, I understand completely. You know, so, I mean, all those things that I highlighted for you on the application are what we need to see in plans. And I totally understand, especially with COVID, that these um, people are hard and few and hard to find um, yeah. lately to have it. So, and like Bob was saying, it takes, it's taking three boards, uh, three, two boards, and then the building commissioner um, doing the actual building permit part of it to get its approval, but you sort of go through these other things. And so part of the planning board and site plan is also making sure about the septic because that is outside. So how does yep. that affect the outside? Even though that would be up to the board of health to approve at a later date. It's, you know, it's sort of, they, they're kind of interwoven, um, but yeah. also okay. the information that, that are gonna be needed. So. Um, my suggestion is that, I mean, I don't even know how this works, John, if you could say we're going to continue it until um, Dale comes back to, to Bob and I and shows us what she has, and then we can say, yes, it's complete enough in order to be put on to the next agenda. Um, oh, okay. Is that something? That's fair. No, we, if, That's if fair. we can, well, if we continue, we have to, you know, our lawyer always says in date certain, but I would suggest we put it, if you think it might happen in the next four weeks, we put it on the February agenda. If, if you're not ready, we put it on the March one. I mean, that's okay. Well, hopefully it'll be ready for February because, <laughs> All yeah, right. let's, let's, uh, if we can put it on, do we have to make that decision tonight for the February yeah, we'll, agenda? Yeah. Okay. And, and then if she it, comes to me and says she's not ready for the the, then we can we can just get that letter and have submit that letter correct okay. or, right as as long as both of us the planning board and you approve a continuance deal it's done and so we can do yeah. it okay at the end of, not a problem at the end of january if we need to continue i would like to ask jennifer or bob if you think there's anything that because we can waive technical compliance and you know is it, it sounds like kind of they have to do everything anyway so we might as well look at it but if there's anything that's like well, I mean, the only one that jumps out at me is the stormwater because it's pretty much all impervious now. Um, yeah. I, I was just more concerned from the pl from the planning board side, parking, signage, lighting, and, right. and the on-site disposal system. But I mean, if we can save them a few thousand dollars because we know that the stormwater is okay, then that's you know we would we don't want to make them jump through hoops like that. Yeah, so. I agree with that. Yeah. So. All right. Well, Denise, I just have a question. So if the septic plan failed, I mean, where is that located? And will that be an issue with the, uh, paving the driveway? And do you, don't you have to turkey mound now, new septic? I mean, is that I'm, just I'm not aware that the septic has failed. I thought I read that. Did I miss well, that? He, the Board of Health he agent had... has a concern. Um, oh, he has a concern, but it hasn't failed. 
Oh, well, it hasn't. There hasn't been a Title V done. It hasn't been determined. No, there has not been a Title V. And I, I asked the seller. I said, I heard that, that the septic failed, and he goes, No, it hasn't. Oh, I'm so sorry. So there's two septic tank. There's two septic systems there. Right. There okay. was one, I believe, for the restaurant part, and one for the sewer system. That, yeah. That's my understanding. And they're both. If you're looking at the building, one is on the right hand side of the building which is not the main section for parking. And the other is towards the back, not towards the railroad tracks, but it's in the back part of the lot, almost where the, um, and that's my understanding. I have not seen. All right. I must have, I must have misread that. Plan that well, this will all come, this will all come back to us, Denise. I think it's, it'll be in a better form once we get yeah. the, the stamp okay. drawings. So. Okay. 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 So do we, have, do we have a motion to continue till? Okay, I'm sorry, what? Oh, we need to move. Um, I, I move that we continue okay. this public hearing um, for 250 Greenfield Road to February 7th, did we say? First. First, like I said. <laughs> At, okay. um, I think we can say seven. Clock. Seven o'clock. That would be yeah. good. Thank All you. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll second that motion. Any dis any further discussion? All those in favor? Um, Denise. Denise Mason, yes. Annalee. Annalee Wolfcool, yes. Max. Max Santis, yes. Uh, Rachel. Rachel Blaine, yes. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. John Waite, yes. Six zero zero. All right. Thanks, Dale. We'll see you next month. Thank good you, luck. guys. Good luck. Have a good night. Everybody's everybody moves around on my screen, so it's harder to call oh. your names. <laughs> so complicated. <laughs> it's it's tough. This is tough stuff. All right. Get back to that agenda. Chris, are you still with us? Yes. He yes, is. I am. All right. Um, so let me get rid of this. All right, so we have, um, we, we really have three old businesses, um, and I apologize, I did not uh, get them to sue in, in time to get them on the agenda, but we do want to talk solar accessory and um, formula-based business. So um, I know, I know there's other people here from the public on, on, some of these, I think probably mostly formula-based business. So I'm wondering if we should do that first or does anybody have any input on the order we go? I'd suggest we do that first too so that they don't have to suffer through the rest of the meeting. Well, I know everybody wants to hear about <laughs> solar and accessory, but um, I know. We, but they've been such good public participants. Let's, <laughs> let's do formula-based. Um, so, Debbie, hi. May I speak for that? Just that, uh, hi, I'm Debbie Shriver, Pocumtuck Drive, um, and also speaking on behalf of Deerfield for Responsible Development this evening. We had continued, we, we thought we had continued the public hearing for the formula-based bylaw until tonight. It somehow didn't quite make it onto the agenda. And in any case, the request that we are making is that we would, if we could please continue that hearing to until the February, uh, I would assume the February 1st meeting, if that's acceptable to the board. Uh, we've been, we have almost completed the revisions that uh, to the bylaw that are responsive to the issues that were all raised here and, and the uh, December meeting. Uh, we're just finishing having some of the folks on the uh, for, in Deerfield for Responsible Development just finish reviewing it, and we'll be we're working with our consultant to finalize the um, drafts, which we will get to you in good time ahead of that meeting. So our request is that we that the board would continue the meeting until February, and we would we'd be very grateful if we could. We'll provide you with the information that you need well ahead of time, and, and then it can be publicly posted and, and so on. So, 
Thank you. Planning board, any comments? Or you want to make that motion? Move that we continue the meeting to address formula based businesses as presented by the Citizens for Con Responsible. Your field for responsible development. Thank you. They put words in your mouth. I love those words. Just what she said. Yep. I second that. Denise. All right. Rachel moves. Uh, Denise seconds. Any discussion? I would just add um, that again, one of the things we talked about, and I think one of the things you'll bring to us is, um, you know, where else uh, comparative. Com yes, you know, I com wanted to, meant to mention that too. We bylaws and things that. like We've that. We've been checking with other locations to yeah. uh, talk about how that what their process is like. I know that Rachel. Uh, in particular had asked about that, but I know that was a concern to the board. So yes, that's a that will be a part of our conversation and what we'll be presenting at the next hearing. Excellent. All right, all those in favor um, of uh, continuing this hearing until February 1st. Um, and I would say, let's say seven o'clock. Um, we often do this, we, we have two or three things at seven because we're not sure how fast things will move. Um, but if you're all, if you're prepared for seven, that's great. We will be ready for seven. All right. Whatever, whenever you want us, we'll be there. All right. All those in favor, Denise. Denise Bison, yes. Annalie. Annalie Wolfcool, yes. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, yes. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. Max. Max Antis, yes. John Waite, yes. Six zero zero. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. See you all then. Um, all right, Chris, which is next? Accessory or by our Tim has his hand up. Up. Oh. Uh, Tim Hilchey uh, speaking for the Conservation Commission. Um, no, actually, I've got two hats on tonight. Community Preservation Committee. Um, I was asked just to notify the planning board that um, a citizen has asked us to consider redoing the bylaw governing who can sit on the CPC. So I just wanted to let you know that we are gonna be discussing at our meeting on January 21st, and we will bring anything that we um, arrive at to the planning board in time to have it considered by the planning board. For our February 1st meeting, yeah. Um, hopefully uh, we will be able to do that, but if not, we'll, we'll, we'll give you, We'll give you enough advance warning. And if we, if we don't have it in a timely enough fashion to get it onto the annual warrant this year, then we'll have to delay it until the following year. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. You said you had a second hat on, Tim? Yeah, well, actually, I was Conservation Commission. I, I don't know why I said that. I meant oh. Community Preservation Committee. Okay. All right. I Thanks. misspoke. All right, so now we have the two issues. Uh, Chris, accessory or solar, which comes first? Uh, solar, please. So we're gonna um, continue our, um, was we, remind me now, I'm sorry, I'm a little thrown off here, Chris. Is, did we have a public we hearing? We didn't open this? the public hearing, no. We're gonna decide on that. No, this is not a public hearing. It's a, it's a working session to talk right. about the draft solar bylaw. Right. And is that true of accessory apartments as well, I believe, right? Correct. We could talk about that. Um, as well, if you like. But I just want to make sure we don't have any more public hearings tonight. I just... No. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Solar bylaws. So I sent uh, the board out a, uh, a proposed draft uh, set of amendments to your, your existing solar bylaw uh, dated 1521. And um, this is our chance to kind of work through this and, and talk about the details of it. Uh, so I think maybe if, if it's okay with you, I'd like to just summarize the key changes in the bylaw. Yeah, please. And hopefully everybody has a copy of it um, from, from the email. So the bylaw, um, again, is an amendment to your existing um, bylaw. And one of the key changes is that uh, we're changing the definitions of the different types of solar systems and defining some new ones. Uh, so large scale uh, ground mounted solar systems are those that are uh, more than five acres in area. 
medium scale ground mounted systems are those that are 10,000 square feet uh, to five acres in area and small scale is under 10,000 square feet for ground mounted. Um, and then it also defines uh, passive solar systems and roof mounted um, solar systems as, as distinct uses. And those are all listed in the table of use regulations um, as amended. So that's one of the key things. Uh, the bylaw now specifies that are, there are certain solar uses that are allowed by right. And those are the small scale systems, all roof mounted systems and passive solar systems. Um, it, the bylaw encourages that large scale systems like utility scale systems be, um, uh, they're encouraged to be done on rooftops not required, but just encouraged. The bylaw has uh, a table of, of dimensional regulations that has been amended. And um, generally speaking, the, the dimensional regulations for setback and side yard and rear yard, et cetera, have been uh, reduced a bit um, to make it um, less onerous. There are some standards for screening and landscaping that have been updated um, and added to. There are also some new standards for solar access. And uh, the solar access standards are basically to ensure that um, if there's uh, a building, a new building constructed or a new system installed, that it will, would not cast shadows on adjacent properties and reduce their solar access. Mm -hmm. And then, um, as I mentioned, there's some amendments to the use regulations table that specifically state uh, which districts each of the, the five different solar uses are allowed in and which ones are allowed by right special permit or site plan review. And um, so that is a quick synopsis. I'm just I'm just looking at the table of use regulations, and I realized that I I did make one omission there. Um, so the large scale ground mounted solar systems are re require a special permit. The medium scale ground mounted systems do not require a special permit. They just require site plan review. So that's um, one thing I guess I would amend in the draft that was sent out. Um, so that's the, the gist of the- uh, I just lost you. Say it again. I'm, I'm, I was looking at something else and then I got, what was it that you just felt that you amended on yeah, the use table? This is, this is in the last page or second to last page of the, oh, okay. the text under other amendments. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Use and regulation it. schedule. Um, the large scale systems require special permit. The medium scale ground mounted systems just require site plan approval. So, um, oh, oh, there's something I would amend. In. Got it. Thank you. Sure. So, I guess I would open it up for questions and discussion. I was looking at the um, decommissioning. Um, so the decommissioning, we, because we, we did have that one that has an escrow account. Uh, yeah, that came up the last time we talked about this. Yeah. And, and you do have something in your existing bylaw about okay. escrow account. Uh, as, as I may have mentioned before, the, the changes that we're making in the bylaw are shown in bold italic font and everything that's not in that font is in your existing bylaw. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and that's back up to 3842. Got it. Okay. I, under that decommissioning section, add a, a clause about abandonment just to clearly define what abandonment meant, um, what needs to happen there. So that's in 38951.
I guess I'll also just mention that um, I did um, reach out to the Energy Committee and invite them to participate in the discussion at, at your suggestion. So, um, Lori Bustada is here, and I'm not sure if other members are as well. So, would I'd love we'd love to hear what you guys think of this. You're you're muted, Lori. Yes, don't you love it when people say sorry and you can't hear them? Anyway, <laughs> thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, wrap my head around one thing quickly. So the the asterisk on the media on the use table, the medium um, scale. What is what is that for? Um, you know, I'm talking about in the industrial area. I guess that is. Yeah, you got to go back to our. Oh, it's from it's from something else. Okay, it's not. I, I I know it's here. It's um. Okay, I'm just curious about that. It's from the existing bylaw. Okay, it's not not important really. Um, and so one thing I I think that I don't. Yeah, you know, we talked a little bit about not knowing how to um, how to do it with regulation, but the idea that we would want to minimize using prime farmland and forest for you know as much as we want to encourage um, solar, because as the nation is expected to go to one hundred percent renewable, that means every community is going to be working on it, um, but. Mm -hmm not at the, the cost of um, our prime farmland or our forests. So I, this is maybe a little bit beyond, oh, I don't know how creative we can get with the bylaw, but um, I was just making a observation that we do have a lot of industrial rooftops in the community. And again, this might not be a zoning thing, but maybe some other mechanism where there can be some kind of, um, you know, there, there would maybe be a tax break to the developer because they're using a rooftop, but it would be a, a benefit for the community. Or if we were going to allow, you know, farmland to be used or forest to be cut, that they would provide a commensurate, you know, protect another area um, of equal size or um, value. You know, especially thinking about wetlands issues and how, um, you know, all the other ecological services that trees provide. I don't know how we put that in. Um, into so I, I, I did hear that comment when we had the energy committee meeting and I attempted to address it in two places. Uh, we've also talked with the planning board about this well. So in section 3837, there's some language that says um, utility scale solar energy systems are encouraged to locate on existing building rooftops rather than on ground mounted locations. Ground mounted systems shall minimize impacts on prime farmland and forest land. And then in the review criteria for special permits, that language kind of comes up again under 3852 when the planning board is reviewing it, it says they should also look at this criteria that the use minimizes impacts on prime farm farmland and forest land. Yeah, I just I just don't know how that will be defined by the planning board. I just don't know how that decision is made um, that it minimizes. I, I just I don't know if you can be any more specific or any more. I think if, if I can just, you know, Lori, the thing that comes up and it's, it's a matter of encouraging and incentivizing maybe and, and kind of the carrot and the stick thing, but, um, you know, the one that we did approve on farmland, it was, you know, one of the things that really, I think, got to a lot of us was it was a, a farmer, they had 50 acres, they were going to use 10 of them, and it was actually going to help them cultivate yeah. the other 40, you know, and so it's like, how can you, it'd yeah. be hard to say no to that. Yeah. Um, and as someone mentioned last time, it's these are not permanent. These are 20, 30 year, maybe 35, 40. I mean, you know, they're a, a finite period when solar 
and then eventually they get taken down and the farmland is still there. So it's a little different than, um, than, the, forest. than some other things. Yeah. Taking down a forest is hard to rebuild. Yes, that's a little different than the farmland. So, but I, I you know, I, again, this is zoning. I, I think it, I'd love to see the town come up with incentives for rooftop and, and disincentives for farmland somehow, but I'm not sure that's a zoning thing. Yeah, no, I just didn't know what kind of um, Im impact or um, um, I'm looking for how you could actually enforce and minimize impacts on um, the just, just I didn't Well, I guess by adding it where it is under E in the 3852, it, it does, if we had other concerns of a, of a large one, this would give us a little bit of meat to say, you know, you can't do it because it's farmland or it's forest, but it by itself, it's a little hard, but it, you know, um, it, it adds a little bit of something, but it's not all that meaty, I guess, mm -hmm. is what I'm thinking. Oh, I see, okay, because, uh, okay. It's, yeah. a, it's a bit of a compromise, Laurie. We, we talked about this the last time and the board didn't feel it was appropriate to outright prohibit solar on farmland and forest land, but we want to discourage it. Um, so that's where we kind of landed. Okay. Um, yep, that makes sense. Always so, looking, always looking for better. Right, and we don't want to pit solar, you know, like solar against farm. No, it's got to be a compromise there, and hand in hand. Yeah, I guess no, we're be interesting to explore though if there are any other mechanisms in the town to you know get a developer to consider the rooftop of um Yankee Candle or you know yeah. Pelican <laughs> instead of the... but I mean that's their you know that's and we we have we are looking at some of those green development issues so um and it's to their advantage ultimately yeah I, mean, I, would... I, I did send an example to you, Chris, of that happening. So I'll just, I'll be keeping my ear out for um, examples of that happening in other places and seeing if we can encourage that. But I agree that that is beyond zoning directly. So. And I would, I would say, I know this is a partly an excuse, but it's a reality too, is that most of the incentives come from state and or federal. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's the money, right? And so if that's where you could put the incentives to give more money for someone who's putting it on a rooftop than someone who's putting it in the farmland. Right? Yeah. Jennifer, you're, 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 um, you're muted. Um, uh, we have a comment from the public, Nick Orsini. Nick? Yeah, I just wanted to say, like, I would love to see some incentivizing for, as Lori said, Yankee Candle as an option, for them to do like ground mounted units. I think the, um, the prison in Greenfield did a fantastic job giving covered parking spaces for all of their employees with the solar panels plus it would help them cut down on costs of plowing because the snow melts quickly and it's funneled into a controlled area and uh, so I think that would be a great benefit for a larger company with such a large amount of uh, paved space anyways to offer their clientele um, the ability to have cool covered storage and provide solar network for our community as well. That's Agreed. all I wanted to say. And to, to address that, that point, uh, which, which Lori did bring up earlier, I, I wanna mention that in the definition for roof mounted solar, right. I, the words, this shell includes solar canopies built over parking lots and par or parking spaces. So the solar canopies become a, a by right use um, under this bylaw rather than um, a special permit use. And again, I don't think that's a small incentive. Um, you know, if you, if you have a by right use as opposed to having to go through a whole special permit process, I think that's a significant incentive. Um, we did address that, that issue. Um, Should it, that be repeated in the definitions, I wonder, or? I, it, that's I, what I'm saying. It's it's in the definitions under roof um, roof mounted solar. Okay, I did read it the first time. I'm just trying to find it again. My um, I I, I noticed that, Chris, and I just wanted to ask about um, the setbacks because 
like I would normally think the the canopies over a parking lot is almost like a ground mounted. Um, so I, I want to make sure that the you, you can't build a canopy too close to your neighbor either. Uh, you know. Well, the solar access provisions would would still affect Cover, that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and we should make sure that it's worded correctly for that. But that's a good point. Yeah, I think some people that they see ground mounted and they say canopy and they might just make a canopy instead of a ground mounted to get around something. And I just want to be careful that we're not setting that up. Right. That's a good a good point. When I, when I tilt mine, you know, in the summer, it becomes more like a canopy than a, than a ground mounted. So, Jennifer. Um, so I know that Bob seems to have left the building commissioner and he had a thought about there was something in the bylaw that he showed, showed me today about it shading like a ground mount of solar shading so many between a certain date so i wish he was here to tell you exactly what i thought he was staying on um so if you would just look into that or contact bob to get um, further clarification because he thinks that part of the bylaw needs to be modified about the solar the canopy yeah it's um it's shading and it's between a certain date and time the sun is and how it yeah. twenty first. That's in um that's in section three eight seven nine. I, I do have a provision in there with specific dates and times, which may be what he's referring to. I don't know if he saw that particular version of the bylaw. I don't want to speak for him, but he thought he was a little concerned about it. So I just think that maybe there would be some more conversation about that and you can hear what he has to say. Um, could, could you ask him maybe to send out an email with his comments? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Three three eight seven nine you say? Oh there it yes. is. Solar access. I'm wondering if he's um, concerned about his ability to or the planning board's ability to um, <laughs> be clear on that. They would have to get some, you know, training. Yeah, what if they want to build it in the middle of June? You don't know where the sun's going to be on December. Well, there, there are tools that you can use to um, determine that, you know, people that yeah. put up solar panels have tools, but it would be an extra thing to know how to use. Yeah. As the zoning enforcement officer, he I think that that's part of it. It's like, well, how do I go and enforce this and how, you know? So I think that that's what he wanted to discuss further of, yeah, mm. so anyway. Oh, well, he, he can add this expertise to his, <laughs> his resume. Right. <laughs> and, and Laurie, if you know more details about specific tools that are available to help evaluate that, um, you know, Please pass that information along as well. Okay. I mean, the solar companies, they all have those meters and they can make predictions about everything. Yeah. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have the name of what you call it right now, but. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anometer. Um, well, Lori, we hope that the um, Energy Committee and all of us can, when we, if, if we pass this, then we should do a little marketing uh, you know, maybe also at the town meeting and beyond to try to yeah. encourage it. Um, there, it got stalled because of COVID, but there was a potential that the energy committee would be um, with money from the clean energy center running a kind of energized deer field and just talking up and getting yeah. information to people. But I would love to see, um, you know, some some canopies in the school parking lots with um, yeah. you know, charging stations underneath them. <laughs> I mean, I think both state and federal tax incentives and, and money is going to become more available over the next. Well, if the governor years, so. signs the climate bill, if you haven't called him, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I hope the climate bill gets passed because the both parts of the house really worked hard on it. But yeah. you know, I think this is um, going to facilitate more solar in town. So that's good. So we would like to schedule a, um, a public hearing. Um, so we got two things on February 1st. They're not, um, well, they're not too long. So you think we should do this on February 1st? Any? 
recommendations? I think this will be pretty clean. I don't know that formula base is going to be as clean, but this will be enough. Yeah. So and we might we might have Whitney antiques, we might not. So I think we can probably do this. Uh, I think so too. Chris, is that are you available February first? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. All right, I'll make a motion that we. Uh, sorry, anything else? But Chris? So Jennifer, we that means we need to have public notice. Oh right. And yeah. uh, just ask, uh, can I just ask one more question that um, I mentioned to you on the email, Chris. Though so I just wondered why you added the reflection piece. Um, <laughs> yeah, that came up at our last planning board meeting, and it was just an attempt to address the planning board's concerns about that. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I want to look into that more. It doesn't feel real to me if I try to picture even if the panels are you know, almost vertical for um, winter. Yeah. I just don't see that it's going to shine into. I, I, I think it's more of a PR thing, maybe, Lori, because I think they all, everybody says it doesn't. It absorbs. Well, it doesn't. It, that's what I'm concerned for because I think it was a big, um, it was an impediment to solar in, a, in other communities that I'd read about. So I was just wondering the. Um, well, and also with current technology. So we, yeah. it's a kind of a protection against some other technology that comes through that. I mean, it, yeah. as John said, it's kind of just PR. It makes, is it, it really going to, is it going to really impede somebody? It makes. If it's not an issue, truly. I think it makes neighbors feel better is why I think we should. Okay. All right. So. Jennifer? Hi. Um, I'm curious about other boards' inputs before we have a public hearing. Which boards do you feel we should get input from? The ones that like to have input. <laughs> we, do, we do not want the finance committee's input. <laughs> Sorry, that's a. Um, oh, it will make everybody's their houses more valuable. So, no, I agree. Will, assessors will love it. Sometimes when we have everybody have the opportunity to. Uh, sure. So know. that's part of the public hearing is that we get comments from all the boards and officials. So can we do that at the same time, or? So we write them and ask them. Hey, what do you think? They would like to attend. Yes. Yes. An invitation from Rachel would be like awesome, man. They would. Like <laughs> I mean, and then if if we could have you know everything from Chris Curtis along, obviously along with it, so that they know what they're, you know, hearing. With. Yeah, Laura, you think we could get us in the paper? That would be good. Hmm. Anybody uh, can get in the paper. Have to talk about that. <laughs> Just, you mean just to get a notice of the public hearing? That that yeah. happened. No, I'd like a little stir. A little okay. stir. Um, um, <laughs> we'll have to talk, Rachel. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what your your angle is, but no, no. I just mean it's good to get more people eyes on before it goes to the town meeting. I think so. You know, as Jennifer is pointing out, more boards just means more buy-in to see. You know. We're not changing anything radically, but it is people's yeah. homes that are going to be impacted and they're going to be concerned. They should be. It's their neighbor that's going to throw something up and they're going to be living with it. So mm. a little com you know, a little more conversation amongst people before it gets yeah. So should we nobody, nobody oh. likes to be surprised. No one likes to be surprised about their house. Yeah. So and should we do their business and new bylaws and you know and new changes and then they just go wait a second I, I didn't hear anything about this and you know that's when everybody's breaks go even though it's not it's yeah. that's what I mean by stir just so that people are aware and hear that we're talking about this and that we're making some changes. So Rachel, the question should we should we put it off till March and try to do more publicity or should we do it in February? And then if we need to, we can continue it to March. Yeah. We could have two. We could I have think two that's public, better. I we could have two public two hearings. Meetings. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's do that. So that Let's there are that. people there. That's all. Lori, yeah. nice article. You, maybe you can write something for my turn in the recorder. Because everybody's reading that. They are. <laughs> yeah. And if we do formula-based and solar on February 1st. <laughs> people will be here. Um, I guess I wish that we, we could... Um, you know, roll out uh, a whole 
educational plan about why everybody should be welcoming solar at the same time that we were. Um, we're about the climate bill. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't want people to come um, because they're afraid of this. I want them to see it as a good facilitating yeah. solar in town and, you know, yes. less pollution is better for all of us. So um, that's, that's how I would promote it. <laughs> so. That's the way that you spin it and say, you know, we're trying to do this awesome thing and right. we want everybody's support. And if you want to hear about how awesome it is, you know, we're not changing we're not really changing much, but it is people's homes. That's all I'm just going to, I'm going to say that one more time that that's where the concern is going to come is like, we're just talking about the glare thing, the issue, or, you know, my neighbor just put up a ground mound. I wish he'd done it on, you know, whatever. And it's also, you know, like I was talking to you guys last time about the size of a ground mounted one and how mm -hmm. tall it is and where mm -hmm. it is on the property line. You know, do you want to be in your backyard and have your neighbor's panel? Like, yeah. you know, I don't know. I'm just saying that people may have some concerns. And actually, Chris, if I could maybe ask you or the Energy Committee, if we had a couple of photos, you know, we're doing this on Zoom so we could put up, you know, what um, what do these bylaws translate into into what it look like? What it looks like, right? If it's if it's this big, you can put it anywhere. But if it's this big, you got to put it further away from your neighbor, kind of thing. Yeah, I think that would help for what is a, what are these definitions of these different yeah. um, sizes? I I did. I think I sent you a picture, a picture Chris, of a um, um, you know a home that had a um, parking canopy. Um, we just happened to notice on uh, I think it was Waitley Road. Um, yeah. That's yeah. a good one, and well, we should include that one too. I mean, mm. I, haven't, I haven't talked to the people. I don't know. If, I guess it's fine to show a picture. Of that. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they know it's a, we're showing it as a good thing. Um, <laughs> we won't give no, it that. A, I think that's a, a good idea. Um, okay. so we, we do have quite a bit of um, roof-mounted solar in town, so I guess the other thing that we could promote is that we're encouraging, you know, roof-mounted solar so I yeah right absolutely all right, all right. All right so um, we, I'll make a motion to um, we didn't do this yet did we mm -hmm. make a motion that we uh, have a public hearing on the revised solar bylaws on February 1st at um, let's say 7 30. I second that motion discussion all those in favor Denise Miss Mason, yes. Emily. Emily Wolfley, yes. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, yes. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. Max. Max Antes, yes. John Waite, yes. Excellent. So thank you. Just to clarify, I will make a few minor changes in the in the bylaw to reflect what we talked about tonight before you actually do the formal ad for the public hearing. Um, I guess this is for Jennifer. Um, and I'll send you all a copy of that updated bylaw, um, hopefully tomorrow. And can you then, for the public hearing, do a one or two sentence, Chris? Sure. It goes into the ad, just because it's, yeah. it's revised. I don't know if we want to say anything more. Revised to make it more appealing or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'll, I'll try to be PR everywhere, you know. <laughs> okay. So Put some little emojis in it. <laughs> <laughs> Since there's going to be more sun because of climate change, we decided to change our bylaws. All right. Um, accessory apartments. We got um, uh, 14 minutes potentially. Okay. So I sent out something earlier today that was dated one seven twenty one, which is the accessory bylaw reflecting the discussion that we had at your last meeting. Uh, minor changes made to it. I'll just quickly summarize what those were. In the purposes section, we combined two of the purposes together and we took out uh, low and moderate income as a language and replaced it with affordable rental units. Um, so that was one change. We 
talked a little bit in section 3933 um, about a couple of issues there. One was the change to the appearance of a, of a structure if, uh, if an accessory apartment is added. And folks thought that having a, a front entry way was okay, but I used the language that it should be combined into a single front entryway for, for both units. Um, that's in nine three three number five. Yeah. Uh, so the entrances would either be to the side or the rear of the building, or if it's in the front, it would be combined into a single front entryway. Does that make sense? Um, under number seven in that same section, we talked a little bit about what the size of of the units maximum size should be. And the sentiment of the board seemed to be to bump that up to a thousand square feet. That's what's in the existing bylaw. So I think that's probably consistent. So that's a change. And then number 12, um, that the uh, apartment shouldn't be occupied by more than three adult residents. That came from, um, Jennifer sent me the bylaw from the town of Amherst and that was one of the provisions that they had that we did not include. So I thought we should consider that possibility. Um, did that have to do with non-related? That's the language that the Amherst bylaw has precisely um, is in number 12. It doesn't, doesn't use the term non-related. Okay, so um, for apartments, it would be four unrelated, you know, were the ones that were allowed into like a, an apartment, but I'm just, just have to be careful depending on the square. I mean, there is also a square footage requirement and that's a building code for how many people can live in a certain, you know, size space, but. Right. But yeah, sorry, I just wanted to add that. that we have a um, comment from Lily, hi. Hi, um, actually it's a question because I looked on the website. I didn't see what the, I didn't see this document. And no, I'm this very, is very interested in it because I'm the author of the original one. Excellent. So this is just a working meeting. It's not a public hearing. So oh, you gotcha. Get sure. to go out to the public, but we'll make sure you get a copy. Yeah, because I'm I would I would love to be helpful in any way yeah. possible. Certainly in, in explaining what we went through and what the issues were that uh, we encountered when we <clears throat> rolled our way through this. But Chris, can you forward that? Did you have Lily's? I think I do. Um, I can I can send you lately that that bylaw. I would appreciate it. Thank you. But on that from the planning no. board, then Lily. No, um, I was senior housing, and this was like uh, so, yeah. frust so was frustrated about... with trying to get anything done that we yeah. said let's at least okay yeah make it so people can stay yeah. yeah yeah. But so do we want to put unrelated in this one is number twelve because I think that is a, a key part of it if. If it's a family of four adults, who cares? Um, but what you don't want is like three unrelated. You don't want it to become a boarding house, I guess. Is that it? Yeah, I mean, basically, because if you're, if you, let's say, I, I mean, I have a twenty, almost twenty-two year old and a nineteen year old, and if it was going to be myself and yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like they're considered a, adults. Yeah. Right, or you and you had another one who was 25, and all the four of you were living there. That should be okay. It's yeah. when you have four unrelated. Yeah, unrelated. So I, I think that makes good sense. Mm -hmm. Lily, I did send you the bylaw. If you want to check your email. Thank you. I'll do that. So Chris, you good with that? Or all yeah, uh, uh, we're adding the word unrelated. Do all four have to be unrelated? What if two are related? Well, I think it has to be like if we could put something in about it being like um, with the what's that? I don't even know. I'm not thinking of the right word. Like, like let's say you're not a blood, but then they consider you to be. I know you got to be careful because families are all different types now. So, um, yeah. So then there's a, there's there should be like, you know, a, a notation saying, you know, family includes significant other. ultimately isn't there a yeah. an inhabitant 
Like, yes. Yes. So, yes. so we have that ultimately. It's not like right. that, that, that's the stopper at the end of the, the day, whether they're the is you siblings or whatever. Like a bunch of strangers living in the space and then saying, okay, we're going to make the boiler room into another bedroom because. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. So, which is already against the building code, probably. Right. But it's, so, I think that's the stopper, actually. So, maybe we don't even have to worry. Yeah. All right. Let's not worry. Lily. Hi. So, so uh, I just wanted to say that right off the bat, I see um, where we are going to run into similar problems. And so, that is yeah. the use of the term rental income. Yeah. So, I want to make a, a proposal here. Uh, is that we we need more work on this, and I don't think we're going to schedule the public hearing for this for February anyway. Um, so what? Let's make a plan for the next like two meetings. Like when do we want to? What's our time frame on this? Get it to annual meeting, and I guess. Yeah, I think if April we or May. if we keep whacking at it and looking at uh, so, you know, we can use minutes. You can use time at the end of February. February's meeting to just look at it one more time yeah. and then put it on the agenda and for March. We still have time meeting. for a spring town meeting, potentially. I mean, if it if it's yeah. shaped up, which I think. So that way, Lily, and maybe you can pass it around to some others and we can dig into it yeah. over the next month. If you're so willing. How do you guys feel about using something like Google Docs so that you're not emailing a million things around? You have one thing. <laughs> That everybody's edits are in comments, and you can accept them or reject them. You can't. You can't do that. Why not? Because well, it's against open meeting law. We if it's a public you can, but we can't. Right. So um, I can put it on my Google Drive, and I can invite you all to do whatever the heck you want with it. No. No, you but can you can invite. Inv you can invite other people and present it to us that way, but we can't uh, be right. part of that. Okay. Right. So you and Chris. You and Chris, Chris. could okay. go back and forth and invite other people. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, even if it was a public document that anybody in the world could comment on? Not as a board. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Because it's like so, having deliberations between. Laws. Yeah. Like gotcha. Okay. But um, it's a doc, but okay. You can't even answer each other's emails. <laughs> information administratively we can but otherwise no, but not uh informationally okay so is does that mean just me and chris chris are there other folks that are working with you on this that we should put on there no no okay <laughs> <laughs> then we don't need to worry about our google doc then if it's just you and me that's right well, maybe say, bob well yeah bob oh, should get bob involved. should look at it yeah. yeah okay and eventually other people but yeah. yeah, that's true. All right. I could, I'm happy to put it up and make it a public document and send people the link. So it's just a working document for now, but then accessible to anybody that works. And we can look at it. We just can't comment. I also okay. think this is an, another one where I think that there would be other people, yeah. other boards interested. Yes. And in particular, the ZBA, because they get the right now, they get a lot of special permits about this business. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yes. So I think that maybe one of the things I, Chris and I can actually just have a meeting and I can, Chris, I can tell you about everything that uh, opponents brought up when it was initially okay. proposed. I, I'm hoping that maybe the tenor has changed, but. No, I have heard a little bit of pushback. It's interesting. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I, but because we've lived with the one that you drafted, we also have a few change. Like people have changed over a bit too. Then yeah, from, yeah. Like in Northampton now, you don't even have to have the um, the utilities connected and stuff like that. So yeah, there's a. I mean, a lot of people communities have been doing this and learning an awful lot. But I also mean in Deerfield. Like we okay. have some non-conform. You know, like people have found found themselves in an awkward situation. So yeah, I, that, yeah. that's another reason why there's some willingness and we're eager to clean yeah. this up a bit so that yeah. there is more yes. conformity, more. Yeah, and, and it's absolutely reasonable. The people who are opposed are opposed for um, n reasons having nothing to do with having older adults and family members in their homes. I'll just say that and leave it alone. 
for now. <laughs> It'll all come out in town meeting, believe me. <laughs> well, but I, I guess I feel a little out of the loop. Can anyone sort of give the flavor of the pushback? I mean, what are the sure. arguments? Against sure, that? I'm happy to tell you that I will give you a direct quote because I was so appalled. We don't want those people from Holyoke coming up here. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. affordable housing is a, um, a very scary proposition to some people in town. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. I can't hear you, but I can just imagine. <laughs> My dog wants to go to bed. Oh, okay. <laughs> So Chris, does this feel, Chris, does this feel all right? Yeah, that's fine. I'll uh, I'll work on it a little bit more, and we'll talk the next time. Thanks for doing this uh, doing this work. Sure. I'll be in touch, Chris. I'm going all right. to too. Good night, you guys. The next, bye, Lily. Bye. The next um. Oh. So, any new business? Set a date for the next meeting. We've already set February first, Jennifer. Um, I just wanted to mention again so about the training is that I, I, I'm, I'm looking at February 9th. I haven't heard from everybody. Um, it may not work for you, Rachel, but I'm looking at the amount of people that are saying that they would be there and what the availability with. Is that a Thursday? I don't have. Um, I don't even know. There was time. I, I just am. I'm Tuesday. Tuesday. It's a Tuesday, but it, wh why would it exclude me? I think it was the time. It was like you wanted it at seven and it just- I worked till 6.30. Six. Yeah, it's six. Or seven actually, I worked till seven. But um, but I'll send it around. Yeah, maybe I mean, if I find out, if we do do that day, I can see if I can't find a sub. Okay. I just think that it will be so great. It'd be really good. Everybody in, you know, and some of the ZBA people have not, responded yet so um we'll see if i'm i'm gonna try to get them all to respond or i'm just gonna say this is the date haha <laughs> mm -hmm. and it, you know people didn't max didn't like my doodle pull i'm sorry that it gives you ads and whatnot i don't pay for it and the town's not going to give me money to pay for a doodle <laughs> pull account and not everybody has outlook otherwise i could send out an invite on outlook but best i can do um COVID stinks. Huh? So I have two um COVID stinks. I have two quick things. One is um I would um well the first one I guess I will say is that I'm gonna be a resident of Deerfield um into early February and then I won't be after that. So I'm gonna submit my 30 day notice tomorrow that I have to get off the board and I that 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 hurts me in one way and it doesn't in another way, but um, so I will attend the February 1st meeting and I guess I'd like on that agenda, well, I don't know if it's on that agenda or the March one that we should elect a new a new chair and talk about, um, I think I think by then, you, hopefully we start hearing from people who wanna be appointed. So I think we, we talked about this last time that between my resignation and a new person and the new election, the planning board and the select board together can appoint someone. And I'm not exactly sure what that procedure is. I think one person has emailed maybe more people. I don't know. Um, Jennifer, do you know how we do outreach on that or is it not really outreach? Um, I guess I can post something on our Facebook page and, yeah. just, you know, and then obviously the select board would be invited to that February yeah. first meeting. And then if any of the, I mean, I don't know how that works because if any of the current board members are interested, then, you know, maybe that makes it even easier and we don't have to sort of. Well, no, the election isn't the issue. More the issue is the. The appointment. Appointment. I'm, I'm talking about the appointment. Yeah, the appointment. No, I'm, yeah. I mean, who's, you know, if people are, if somebody wants to, then we can appoint somebody. Well, I think there will be people volunteering and if it's more than one, then I think that's where it gets to be like, you guys would have to figure out a way to you have some criteria, have some criteria, you know? I was appointed twice. And um, yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think I was too. And um, 
and then I talked to um, Paul Alice today, and, and I don't know, Jennifer, you have more information, but I, I don't think we can count on him playing a role over the next few months, and then his term comes up. So I, I don't think he'll run for re-election. And then who else were on the re-election thing? Uh, Rachel and... And um, I think Ann Mary, right? Ann Mary, are you up? No. No, I think it's Max. Oh, Max. Max. Rachel, Rachel, Max, and Paul, I think are up. So, I um, said to you right after I got it from um, yeah. our, but so, I mean, there, there's going to be some vacancies. And so just to be, you know, mindful of everything that we have going on, three yeah. separate bylaws, the remand, the Dollar General, like, and then having somebody, you know, new put into to the mix of it all. Uh -huh. Several people knew. So my other uh, point was that I wish at, at the end of these meetings, we had some time to kind of debrief, but that first item tonight, the continuance, I think I think we did as good as we could do. So um, I, I appreciate everybody hanging in there. And uh, all I can say is good luck to you in June, but I think we put it off as far as we could. You but I think didn't have to buy a new house just to get out of the-, the I really stopping. didn't, you know, I really Painful. didn't want them continuing month after month. And, and I think if we had voted to deny it, we might've got in trouble. So I, I think you probably did the best thing, but um, oh. that's that's a tough one. I've, I've done what I can for three years on that one. <laughs> well, Donahue didn't seem too happy. But. You need to uh, call in for that meeting, John. Oh, I'll, I'll listen, but not show my face. <laughs> 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 Any other business tonight? Motion to adjourn. Well, I just Looks. have one question. So, John, if you're giving yours, I mean, what is Paul doing? And would we want to ask? I mean, if he is not interested, would someone ask him if he want if he's going to give his resignation? And if so, would we be appointing two people so we would know that, and two people who would want to continue on to be right. on the planning board? Jennifer, have you more? Yeah, so I don't have anything more, but my thoughts on it is whether or not um, Casey or you wanted to reach out to um, his family, his executor, yeah. and yeah. Um, and see if that's something that you know we wait out or we or we ask them to try to do something about it. And I'm not sure quite what the etiquette and the I know. so yeah. just to. Let people know. I, I I spoke to Paul today, but he didn't know who I was. Um, he he's not well. Oh, okay. So um, and so it's it's a funny, uh, it's kind of a strange situation, uh, you know. So you have to be very understanding of that and feeling for that, but yet the town has to go about its business. So um, right. we're recording, so just you know, yeah. it's, let's, All right. we have to. Yeah, let's. Um, I was saying I have the name and the. Um, I'm gonna ask Casey maybe if she could reach out to his executor and see if that's okay. something, you know. Yeah, I'd be happy to help her if that if I could help. So okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, Anything else? <laughs> Motion to adjourn. So move to adjourn. <laughs> I All second those in it. favor. Aye, 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 aye. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Good night.